Um, I have a video of Michael Irving that was... Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Damn. Ow. That hurt. <laughs> Damn. Fucking wind. Ow. Wow. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report without you guys. As well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Let's get open for business here and let's wake up the football gods here on this Saturday of Memorial Weekend. I can't believe it's Memorial Weekend. You know, time flies when you're having fun. It was 21 years ago this weekend that we bought this house. 21 years of being here. It's hard to believe Michael was in middle school. My daughters were in elementary school. I had no fish pond out there. And all of the memories and things that have happened here in this house, it's just amazing to me. And remember, this is Memorial Day to remember those who are not here with us. As you're stuffing your face with another cheeseburger and some more potato salad, remember that, please. So, I don't know... If you've noticed this, to me, it seems like, you know, CeeDee Lamb, of course, is absent um, from OTAs and things. And that seems to have given more time for Dak Prescott and Brandon Cooks to get on the same page. We've heard people talking about, oh, the Cowboys could cut Brandon Cooks, save some money, or they could trade him. I hear what you're saying and all that, but we traded Amari Cooper for a fifth round draft pick. I don't know how much more you're going to get for Brandon Cooks, um, especially since we are loaded for bear with draft picks for next year. We should be using some draft picks to trade for some other players. But it seems like Brandon Cooks is beginning to get on the same page with Dak Prescott, as well as this offense. You know, when you think about changing coordinators and people didn't believe it, Last year for the Eagles, the Eagles had a lot of growing pains when they changed both coordinators, offensive and defense, and have changed them again. Today's NFL is different than it used to be, where you used to have two-a-day practices going on for five weeks, where you have plenty of time to do the installs. The teams are already doing the installs. This week, they've gotten uh, install one, two, and three already installed. Next week, they'll be installing even more of it. So by the time you get to training camp, it's not about learning anything new. It's about taking what you've learned and perfecting it, which is one of the reasons why it's harder when you bring a lot of new players in to start out cohesive to begin the season. And so when you think about the Cowboys, of course, trading for Brandon Cooks last year and them changing offensive coordinators, when you look at the Cowboys offense the first five weeks, it left you wanting to the point where we used to call the Texas Coast the Texas Toast offense and said, man, we miss Kellen Moore, who was in with the Chargers screwing up Justin Herbert. Be that as it may, after the bye week, the offense started to get into its groove. Now, Brandon Cooks, who has been a thousand yard receiver, not every single year. See, that's the thing that they don't get you, okay? They think people look at it and say, well, Brandon Cooks has been a thousand yard receiver everywhere he's been. Yeah, but he's been there sometimes multiple years and only had one. So they give you the perception that Brandon Cooks is all of a sudden dropped off and no longer being a thousand yard receiver where he was every single year, but he wasn't. See, that's how you manipulate the statistics. We can take numbers and skew them any, any way we want. We often can take numbers and we'll fit them into the narrative that we want to try and paint. And I probably am guilty of this. Yeah, they, they, they do that. So having Brandon Cooks here working out all this summer with Dak Prescott, working out with the Texas Coast offense the second year, you expect him to be better. Now, one thing that has left us wanting the last couple of years has been the number three receiver. Last year, we saw Michael Gallup, who it seemed like, for whatever reason, bad things kept happening 
when you were throwing the ball around Michael Gallup. Incomplete pass, interception, beat, whatever. Um, it just did not work since he tore his ACL. Jalen Tolbert got a little bit of playing time. In fact, was actually more productive in his time versus Michael Gallup. And you see now that Michael Gallup has, uh, excuse me, has gone, that Jalen Tolbert has actually put on some weight. On top of that, you have Jalen Brooks, who's kind of pushing there too. And at the moment, you start looking and saying, the Cowboys may be in the best receiver position that they've been since C.D. Lamb's rookie season when we had Amari Cooper, C.D. Lamb, and we had a healthy Michael Gallup before the ACL. Provided they get C.D. Lamb happy and in camp, C.D. Lamb is far better right now than Amari Cooper was. You could see Brandon Cooks being able to step it up and possibly being close to that 1,000-yard receiver, kind of like C.D. Lamb was as a rookie. And possibly Jalen Tolbert stepping up and being like a Michael Gallup. Now, here's where I brought up Brandon Cooks because Brandon Cooks seems to be becoming that leader of the receivers. He's got more tenure than, of course, anybody on that uh, team. And he seems to be more vocal and beginning to be that guy. And so he started talking about um, Jalen Tolbert. So, speaking to reporters at OTAs, Brandon Cooks likes what he sees from Jalen Tolbert going to his third season. He's ready to go, Cooks said of his teammate. Whatever the expectation is, uh, is for him out there, I'm telling you he's going to crush it. He's ready. There's an opening at the number three wide receiver spot um, this season, of course, because we got rid of Michael Gallup. And um, when you think about the year before, where we had Noah Brown and Michael Gallup kind of splitting time. And, and Noah Brown has gotten better. Noah Brown has definitely gotten better. We really have not been able to use that third wide receiving position like we would have liked to. And if this does, if this does um, work out and he is going to step up, looking like he's more confident, looking like he's stronger, looking like he's more focused. All of a sudden, this is getting more of like what Mike McCarthy likes on his offense. He likes a mix of a veteran wide receiver. When you think of the Green Bay Packers Super Bowl team when they had Donald Driver, and they had the young stud like a Greg Jennings. They ended up having a Jordy Nelson. They ended up not necessarily running the football really well because their leading rusher only had 730 yards. You can see Zeke Elliott in that position. You know, being able, he'll get you seven, eight hundred yards. I can guarantee you that. He'll give you that lead blocker uh, position too. He'll be able to give you that pass protection. And so, you do the things that you know have worked for you in the past. And this is by design, I think, by Mike McCarthy. And so, you're going to see Jalen Tolbert used. You're going to see Jalen Brooks used. And it still wouldn't surprise me if they went out and got one more veteran wide receiver. And this is where I say to people, forgive me, sorry, did not mean to snort into the microphone. Um, people look and say, the Cowboys offense, the Cowboys are going to be like a 7-8 win team. I'm not there with you on that because there's a lot of talent on this offense that is coming back with guys you expect to do better. When you think of Terrence Steele coming back from his ACL, generally it takes a good year to really be back in form. I expect him to be better. You've got two all-pro guards. You have a young stud in Cooper BB who is going to have some growing pains, but you're going to be strong up the middle, stronger than you've been in a long time. And when you have the amount of receivers and playmakers, the Jake Fergusons, the Brandon Cooks, the C.D. Lambs, you will be able to split out the field. And if you can do that, they can put eight men in the box all they want, but you've got guys that will beat it. And so this is more of the death by a thousand cuts. And you have to like this. So with Jalen Tolbert, you got to look at this and say, he's got the chance to really make a name for himself in the third year. So, of course, we have to deal with the Dak Prescott's comments about, um, I don't play for money. Um, 
as well as the contract situation. So I'm going to go to ESPN to roll us out of here and see the latest pitch on why the Cowboys are stupid. Dallas has a couple people to pay at this point, including Micah Parsons. He's not at OTAs either. And, of course, Dak Prescott. He is there, but back to CD. Dak Prescott was asked about Lamb's absence yesterday. Here's what he said. In a sense, it's okay that he's not here. That's a big-time player, and he's training. We know what he's doing. We know that he's he's getting – he's he's fine. I've thrown, thrown with him a couple of times. I think last time he asked me, I said no, and – He's ready to go. He looks like C.D. Lamb. So the fact these young guys can get in here, they can hear everything, they can communicate, they can understand what I want uh, on routes um, will be big, and we're going to need some of those guys. Last season, no player accounted for a higher percentage of his team's receptions than C.D. Lamb. Other than Lamb, the Cowboys only have one other wide receiver on their roster who has at least 25 receptions in their career. That player is Brandon Cooks, who will turn 31 years old in September. Todd Archer did tell us yesterday that Brandon Cooks looked really good. But, Mike, how do you see this playing out with C.D., Dak Prescott, Micah Parsons? They're all looking to get paid in Dallas. The Dallas Cowboys have made a massive mistake. They're either going to lose C.D. Lamb or have to dramatically overpay him, and here's why. Dak Prescott can't be franchised. You have to get in a room and get his deal done. I don't know why Dak Prescott isn't signed, but it's critical to remember he cannot be franchised. He has to get signed. Then you have Micah Parsons, arguably the best non-quarterback in our sport. He will be franchised 100%. You can't let a good young pass rusher go. That leaves C.D. Lamb, who's on the precipice of becoming a free agent. So we already talked about players like Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson. If C.D. Lamb's about to walk out the door, I've been there as a GM. You're paying a massive premium. So C.D. Lamb, I know, is anxious to get a deal done. But the way this could actually play out, it's very plausible. He will have incredible leverage next offseason. Really quick, D. Wood, I just want to say, as, as Mike T. was just pointing out there, he can't be franchised. It's in his deal. It's not just that they wouldn't want to. It, they literally can't <laughs> do it. it. Go ahead, D. Wood. Yeah, everything has a trickle-down effect in, in Jerry's world right now, with the, starting with the quarterback. But, you know, you know we talk about C.D. C. D. Lamb. You know, what's funny here, Laura, is when the Dallas Cowboys actually woke up and said, Man, maybe we need to start force feeding this guy the ball. <laughs> like that's when it, that's when it really took off for this Dallas Cowboys offense in CD Lamb. And now they've really put themselves in a crux because there's nothing behind him. Mm. That's the thing here. He knows, like, I'm the man on this offense. Outside of Dak Prescott, I'm the man. So the Dallas Cowboys in the is in the all they're in the pickle right now. Yeah, what you guys have alluded to, uh, the fact that they've let these things drag on to the point where their star players now have all this leverage and other deals are getting signed and the dollar price tags are only going up. To me, that's by far the worst mistake the Cowboys have made this offseason, much more so than not signing free agents. I know that's been frustrating for Cowboys fans. This, to me, is much more of an unforced error. You are good at drafting and developing players. This is the evidence. Uh, but to run a to run office successfully, you have to sign those players to deals that don't compromise the entire team, mm -hmm. and they simply haven't done so. You can make a case for not doing it with Dak Prescott if they really are tired. They feel like they've hit a ceiling. I don't personally agree with that, but you can I can understand that. I do not see a case for not getting a deal done by now with CeeDee Lamb. It makes no <laughs> sense. He was on my first team All-Pro last list. You guys have talked about the lack of death behind him. There is no logic to this. Uh, and if I was a Cowboys fan, I would be very, very nervous about it. Yeah. Well, here's the thing that I'm going to say is, and um, some people have alluded to it as well, is that the fact that CD is waiting for Justin Jefferson. Everybody's waiting for Justin Jefferson because he is going to reset the market and everybody wants to make sure that they're not leaving any money on the table. For whatever reason, people think that Dak Prescott is supposed to be different than everybody else and he's supposed to leave money on the table for others where the Dallas Cowboys have never shown a perplexity to say, we're going to go out and get other players because now we have more money. I don't think that's the case. I actually believe, whether it works or not, that there is a master plan here, and I'll go into more details later on, on the contract situation. Because at the moment, they're going to get $9.5 million. You know, we have not been over um, $8 million this off season. For the Cowboys now to be sitting ready to, you know, next week, to be at $14 million. Yeah, $14 million, almost 14 
um, they're actually having more money now than they've had all offseason with the moves that they've made. That's enough money to get them through the season. You can go ahead and eat the Dak Prescott money now, and then you can start redoing the contract with, you know, knowing that we're taking this big hunk out the way now off the table, we're going to be better off in the future by then doing the deal next year. Now, again, I may be the village idiot, but at the moment, we do have over 30 free agents uh, with expiring contracts next year. We do have... Uh, to Marcus Lawrence, um, Zach Martin, and Dak Prescott with voidable years, dead money, and things. So it behooves you to get those deals taken care of and kicking that money down the road. But even with that money that's dead, the Cowboys still have $65 million of cap space. And if they end up extending Dak Prescott, they'll end up having even more. And when you talk about all in, all in may actually be next year. But we'll see how it all works out. And um, we're going to be doing a few things here today um, that will be kind of nice. And uh, hopefully you guys will tag along as we go ahead and go through this thing called life. As always, I appreciate each one of you guys. And remember...